A few years before, the Bitcoin issue startled the world, which took a huge turn in many people's lives, especially in Mark Capel's life. What was that? How has it affected many lives? Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we'll look at how Bitcoin ruined Mark Capel's life. Be here and listen. From away, the world's largest Bitcoin exchange appeared to be a colossal example of renegade entrepreneurship. On the inside though, Mount Gox was a jumbled mass of poor management, neglect, and raw inexperience, according to many who were there. Mark Capels is the former CEO of Mt. Gox, a company that operated Bitcoin exchanges and processed more than 70% of Bitcoin transactions before its 2014 collapse. Mark Capels was born in 1985 in France. In 2003, he worked at Linux CyberJewers, managing the network and developing software. Mark Capels was a Bitcoin Foundation founding member. In 2010, he founded Mt. Gox in Tokyo, Japan. Mt. Gox declared bankruptcy in both Japan and the United States in 2014. The reasons for Mt. Gox's demise are yet unknown. After the bankruptcy proceedings are completed, Mark Capels's net worth is projected to be around $2 billion in Bitcoin. Mt. Gox was a major exchange during the early days of Bitcoin usage. The exchange suffered a massive loss in February 2014. Withdrawals were banned in early February 2014 after the exchange claimed to have found suspicious behavior in its digital wallets. The exchange lost hundreds of thousands of Bitcoin coins. The alleged missing coins varied from 650,000 to 850,000. At the end of the month, the company had blocked the withdrawals and seats trading, resulting in a 36% drop in the price of Bitcoin by the end of February, which was around $540 for one Bitcoin. Local and international authorities successfully relocated approximately 200,000 Bitcoins, destabilizing the market. Mt. Gox declared bankruptcy in Tokyo District Court and was ordered to liquidate in April 2014. The assets of Mt. Gox were then placed in an estate that contained over 200,000 Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash. Some Bitcoin has already been sold in anticipation of the forthcoming Bitcoin release. During the creditors' hearing in 2018, Nobuaki Kobayashi, a trustee of Mt. Gox's estate, sold 24,658 BTC, worth $260 million at the time. Mt. Gox was a cryptocurrency exchange situated in Tokyo that operated from 2010 to 2014. At its peak, it accounted for more than 70% of all Bitcoin transactions. Although it is most often referred to as Mt. Gox, the exchange is also known as MT Gox or MT Gox. The exchange declared bankruptcy in 2014, although it was the subject of lawsuits and rumors for years. Before that, Jed McCaleb built the website that evolved into the Mt. Gox exchange. It started as a mechanism for fans of the card game Magic the Gathering to exchange cards online. Mt. Gox was formed as an abbreviation for Magic the Gathering Online Exchange. In 2011, the site was given to Mark Capels in exchange for six months of earnings. Capels rose to become the company's largest shareholder and CEO. This is where Mark Capels' story of destruction begins. Because of its notoriety in the Bitcoin market, it became a target for hackers and Mt. Gox had security issues multiple times during its operation. In 2011, hackers transferred bitcoins using stolen passwords. Several thousand bitcoins were lost due to flaws in network protocols the same year. According to Coindesk, on December 4, 2014, BTC reached $1,236.90 on Mt. Gox's platform. Meanwhile, Coindesk's Bitcoin Price Index BPI, for that day was $1,147.25. Mt. Gox coins are regularly traded at a premium to those bought on other exchanges, and by 2013, the site handled the vast majority of all Bitcoin transactions. That popularity, however, was not due to Mt. Gox's sterling reputation. The crisis began on June 19, 2011, just after a few months after Carpels took charge. An attack reduced the price of Bitcoin on the exchange from $17 to about a cent in minutes. According to a Daily Tech article, the price drop was accompanied by the theft of 400,000 Bitcoins worth around $8.75 million dollars. Carpels pulled the exchange offline and said that transactions would be rolled back to reflect account balances before the attack, which would become a typical approach. The attack occurred after Bitcoin's spectacular climb from $0.74 cents on March 20th to $29.60 on June 8th, a 4,000% increase in 80 days. Customers indicated rising irritation with withdrawal issues in the months running up to February 2014. Technical glitches kept the corporation from having a strong grasp on transaction data, particularly the ambiguity of whether bitcoins had been sent to clients' digital wallets. Carpels tweeted about programming issues on cab TV screens while his customers waited to withdraw their money from Mt. Gox, 
several times. Mark, you are hilarious. According to Robert McMillan of Wired, Carpels was unconcerned about the state of Mt. Gox and the assets it possessed. Identified bugs would go unfixed for lengthy periods as Mt. Gox's CEO allowed his priorities to shift. His $1 million Bitcoin cafe became his focus despite the coin lab litigation and Homeland Security's confiscation of $5 million in Mt. Gox's customers' cash. In February 2014, the exchange suffered a fatal blow. The exchange banned withdrawals in early February 2014, claiming to have discovered suspicious behavior in its digital wallets. Hundreds of thousands of bitcoins were lost by the company. The number of coins reported missing ranged from 650,000 to 850,000. While 200,000 bitcoins were eventually retrieved, the lost cryptocurrency severely destabilized the market. The worth of the bitcoins was estimated to be in the hundreds of millions, forcing Mt. Gox to declare bankruptcy. In April 2014, it filed for bankruptcy in the Tokyo District Court and was ordered to liquidate. Mt. Gox's assets were in an estate that included over 200,000 Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash. Mt. Gox trustee Nobuaki Kobayashi extended the deadline for submitting claims to March 31, 2020 and October 2019. There was conjecture that Russian hackers were responsible for the robbery and that some of the stolen Bitcoins could be recovered. CoinLab, a major creditor of Mt. Gox, has continued to pursue its multi-billion dollar breach of contract case against the company. On February 4, 2014, a Coindesk survey began surveying Mt. Gox customers. According to the response, 70% of users who made withdrawal requests had not received their monies, and the median waiting time was between 1 and 3 months. To fully comprehend the issue, the system must be in a static condition. The exchange said on February 7th, we apologize for the short notice. Three days later, the business issued a statement blaming transaction malleability, a weakness that allows attackers to change the hashes for certain transactions, making completed transfers look to have failed and therefore exposing themselves to double payment. According to Andreas Antonopoulos, this argument amounted to blaming the core developers for Mt. Gox's incompetence. In a reversal of the regular pattern, the exchange's Bitcoin price dropped to $135, a fraction of the cost on other exchanges. The market did not anticipate the corporation meeting its obligations. Mt. Gox shut down its website and deleted its Twitter feed on February 24th. Meanwhile, an internal document that has since been certified as legitimate began to circulate publicly. At this time, 744,408 BTC are lost as a result of malleability-related theft that went unreported for several years. On February 28th, the company declared bankruptcy, claiming that it had lost 850,000 Bitcoin, including 100,000 of its own, valued at approximately $480 million and accounting for 7% of the global total. When coming to the parts of Carpels, there is a lot to be discussed. The 480 million quandary. Most people saw Carpels as a pitiful character, a geek who didn't have an entrepreneurial bone in his body and was over his head. Macmillan's Wired essay lends itself to that interpretation. The picture of poor Carpels adorning the cash register he hacked while his business crumbles invoke both sorrow and rage. But what if he accepts it? What if the entire hack is a ruse? Now that he's in police custody, there's a chance we'll find out. However, it appears that the Japanese authorities are uninterested in the stolen Bitcoin. According to the Japan Times, a Tokyo district court decided Thursday that Bitcoin is not subject to ownership claims. In any case, such an approach makes no sense. Asking courts and authorities to reinstate Bitcoin is nearly contradictory. For the time being, the entire idea is that it is unregulated, that there is no FDIC or the Japanese equivalent, no lender of last resort, and no authority to intervene or arbitrate. Vigilantes hacked carpels, anti-bans files, and publicized transaction records, remaining true to the spirit of the enterprise. Some claim to have seen their transactions in the records, indicating they are genuine. Carpels was also also doxed by the Gox hackers. Nonetheless, there is no commonly acknowledged evidence that Carpels stole any money apart from the $1 million heist being investigated by Japanese police. Some claim to have identified specific chunks of stolen Bitcoin in the blockchain, but Redditors say many things. Other explanations fall somewhere in between theft and incompetence. There is evidence that Mt. Gox was running a deficit six months before declaring bankruptcy and that it was using client funds to pay for other customers' withdrawals. Alternatively, when Bitcoin was valued at least little to nothing, Carpels did something similar, and the accompanying debt increased along with the price. While Rick Falk Finge's theory is just as speculative as the rest, it has been confirmed by subsequent events. He contrasted Mt. Gox's claim to a prior alleged theft in which MyBitcoin.com went down without explanation. Two weeks later, 
they revealed that their deposits had been taken, but that they'd recover almost half of the amount. Falkvenge anticipated that Mt. Cox would give their clients a portion of the assets back, an amount possibly smaller than 50%, to drive the message home, and that offer should come on or around March 11th, 2014. Right now, what's going on? Mark Capels was convicted guilty of altering exchange data in Japanese court despite avoiding some counts. According to the Wall Street Journal, the Tokyo District Court ruled Carpels guilty of wrongfully producing electronic records related to Mt. Cox's books, but innocent of embezzlement and breach of trust. Carpels received a two-year and six-month suspended sentence. He must keep a clean record for the next four years to avoid jail time. The verdict comes nearly five years after Mt. Cox filed for insolvency in April 2014, saying it had been hacked for 850,000 Bitcoin, some of which were eventually discovered. According to the WSJ, Carpels's lawyers wrote in their final court argument, Mt. Cox did not collapse because of the defendant's, Carpels, wrongdoing. On the contrary, the defendant was trying his hardest every day to prevent its collapse. In December, Japanese prosecutors sought a 10-year sentence for Carpels on embezzlement charges, stating that he misappropriated approximately $3 million of customer funds for his benefit. Carpels, on the other hand, had repeatedly stated his innocence and apologized throughout the years. I never dreamed things would end this way, he once stated. I am forever sorry for everything that has happened and the impact it has had on everyone involved. The Japanese bankruptcy court that first reviewed the case concurred with creditors who petitioned to send the matter to civic rehabilitation in August of last year. As a result, creditors may seek to have their Bitcoin locked up at Mt. Gox and return to them in their original form rather than having them converted to fiat currency. Prosecutors had sought 10 years in prison. Carpels had quietly in court, dressed in a dark suit, listening to the judgment. His case gained international notice when cryptocurrencies were still in their infancy. So did his nearly year-long confinement ahead of his trial. Mt. Gox trustee Nobuaki Kobayashi announced in January that the deadline for creditors to produce proof of their claims had been extended to March 15, following which the trustee will submit the rehabilitation plan to the court. Images of Mark going out of prison show him to be an entirely different person after losing weight in recent months. So, are the Wild West days of Bitcoin coming to an end? Did the cuffs click on Carpels' wrist signal the start of a new era? Will the community tolerate some control, sacrificing its fiery independence in exchange for protection. Taro Aso, Japan's finance minister, has suggested regulating exchanges. It remains to be seen what will come of it.